Okay, so in the last few videos, I did a few little uh, explanations on some of the shorting coil um, experiments and how they can uh, increase what you're getting from the generator coil while simultaneously um, reducing the uh, drag that it's counter torque that it's putting on the uh, prime mover. Um, <clears throat> this right here, I just want to mention real quick. This is one of the little scooter motors. Um, Go to energeticforum.com and look up the three battery thread and look at what uh, Matthew Jones and Turion is uh, talking about in there. Um, this motor is normally a regular scooter motor and when you rewind it like this um, you get it pulsing. It's an off and on um, and that's going to replace this steady DC motor so I can get to the same speed for less draw. That's going to increase the overall efficiency of the entire deal. John just had this because this is obviously just a demonstration machine, but it proves the point. Um, so this chrome ray generator, um, I'd also recommend reading the patent very carefully because um, there's probably about maybe 10 things he says in there, statements or phrases, which are very enlightening. I'm not going to mention what they are. Uh, maybe they're not very interesting to others, but they're interesting to me and very revealing. Uh, not only is this a very nonlinear machine, but he alludes to different things, and he also outright says a few things that if you kind of put two to two together, there's different ways to run this machine. So anyway, what I'm going to do is also show how to short the coils on the Cromery, um, because a few people have been uh, interested in that, and that was one of the demonstrations I was going to do anyway. Uh, so from the generator coils, what we have is um, the output from the uh, rings are going one here and one here down here so these two terminals or leads right here are for the um, AC output which you'll get the classic uh, Cromway sine wave with a dip at the peak you know on, on in both directions and then those two go basically go to this bridge um, it's probably like a 25 amp uh, I don't know 400 volt bridge or something like that and so um, that's going to be the DC output. So what I'm going to do first is I'm just going to get this up to speed and we're going to look at what the peak-to-peak um, -peak voltage is on the AC here. And then what I'm going to do is this reed switch, these are old uh, Lucent technology reed switches from AT&T, really good for their intended purpose which is not shorting coils. You don't want to short the coils directly with the reed. This is just for um, quick easy experiment. But um, you really want to use a reed or a reed relay to basically trigger some other circuit which then in turn shorts the coils. Maybe you're using MOSFETs or SCRs or whatever. You search for shorted coil circuits on the internet. You're going to see all kinds of different variations where this is just triggering the shorting event. It's not used to actually short it itself. Okay, so anyway, we're going to get it running on this scope here. Um, we're going to look at, I think voltage peak to peak is right here. We're going to see what the, what the peak to peak voltage is for the uh, AC. And then what I'm going to do is these leads right here are alligator clipped to these leads, which are on DC right now. So let me take these over to AC because that's what I want to do first. Okay, so we're so that reed switch is in parallel with the with the AC. And when I take this reed switch and I put it by one of these magnets every 180 degrees it's going to trigger it off and on. Now you're going to hear the motor either um, slow down, bog down, speed up, whatever. That's because I can't hold this and look at the stuff at the same time. Plus it's not going to be super accurate. Ideally you want it to short, you know, right about at top, you know, when it comes to uh, uh, top dead center. Like it's attracting in, boom, right there, top dead center, short, release, and then that's that's where you want to time it. So I'm not going to be able to time it perfectly, but it's going to be enough to show the uh, prove the point. So AC, regular um, peak to peak voltage, and then shorted. And then we're going to see what the voltage peak to peak voltage on DC is. And then we're going to short that and look at the comparison. So I'll go ahead and mount this. Uh, batteries I'm using are just 35 amp hour Harbor Freight batteries. 35 amp hour deep cycle 12 volts. This one is resting at 13.19 volts. It'll drop to about 12 something right when it gets running. I'm not going to show the RPM, but it's going to be 1,470 RPM. So anyway, I'll go ahead and mount this up, get this running, and uh, 
check the shorted coil voltage. And okay, and by the way, for this um, experiment here, go to energeticforum.com, check out the three battery thread, and look at what Matthew Jones and Turian has posted, and what want to make, and some others are starting to um, rewind these motors so they can take part in the experiments on the three battery um, system. Um, so, okay, get it up to speed here. One thousand four hundred seventy RPM. Okay, um, I'm going to put the scope on the AC. something shorted on the bridge here. Just a second. Okay. So now we got the classic waveform. The shaft is a little bit off center with the magnets and the cores and everything, but normally it's going to be fairly symmetrical. So we have the uh, basically a sine wave, but it's dipped and then it dips in the opposite direction. But this is what the chrome ray is supposed to look like. Cromway, Cromway waveform. So let me clear this out. Let me see what this thing is set at. Okay, so the voltage peak to peak is 172 volts. Seventy-two volts. So I'm going to go ahead and short it out, and what you're going to see is the uh, oscillatory transients. That's what people, everyone calls the spikes, which is the collapsing magnetic field in, inducing a high voltage, low current spike. So let me bring this down so we can see what that that deep voltage really is. So that basically proves the point. You can see that the peak to peak voltage max, 720 volts. So 720 volts coming off these smaller coils with this few winds is uh, actually pretty good. I mean, there are four of them in series, so that, that kind of adds up uh, to the voltage. But you can see 720 volts compared to um, 172. And you could see uh, the spikes, so you know that you're going to be able to charge a uh, ca capacitor up uh, pretty good with that. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to switch the scope over to uh, DC, and then we're going to short the DC side, and um, or short the AC and see what comes out of the the, uh, the rectifier. So here's the waveform for DC. Okay, so the current or the uh, peak to peak voltage right now 
That's about 82 volts. So 82 volts DC. And that's with the coils open. And when I short them, you're going to see the spikes. It's all the way down because it's going to be off the scale there. Let's see if we can get it. So you can hear when it bogs the motor down, I'm not shorting it in the optimum place, kind of hard to do it by hand. But the closer I get to that top dead center spot, we got a peak to peak voltage of 528. So 528 volts versus 92 is uh, quite a difference. You know, so we're looking at like about a six times, 600% increase in voltage by shorting it out. So you can get a cap charge way higher you know, do you want to send that kind of voltage directly to the battery if you want to charge it with spikes or whatever? I guess you could. But anyway, this just kind of proves the point. So, let me go ahead and stop that there. So, again, what we saw is we had 170 or so volts peak to peak, whatever it was on the AC with the open. And then it was over 700 volts when we shorted the AC out. And then when we had DC, we had um, 90 volts peak to peak. But when we shorted it, we had over 500 volts. So about a six times increase. And so um, what that's showing is that this that is one possible um, experiment you can do with the Chrom Ray so that you can further um, decrease the drag. Um, increase, uh, unload the motor, which is what decreasing the drag is going to do, while simultaneously getting more out of your coils. And again, you could hear the motor kind of bog out and everything when I shorted it sometimes, but that was because um, I'm not shorting it in the optimum place. And if you do that in the wrong in the wrong place, you're not going to um, uh, get the results that you want. You know, it really needs to be shorted right at a really good time. So I'd imagine like an optical commutate, you know, some type of optical switch or something that's adjustable so you can get real fine tuning on the timing of when that's going to get shorted um, is going to be um, optimum.